Welcome to Madison Storytellers. As you hear these stories, uh, if you want to tell your own story, uh, we would love for you to do that, because that's what we're here for. Uh, we're here just for everybody who wants to tell a story to get up and tell it. All right, so here are some things that you tried once and never, ever tried it again. Um, oh, yeah, uh, rollerblading. <laughs> sure. No, that's, I have never tried that at all. All right, so our next story is going to be Amanda. Amanda's going to tell the next story. So let's hear it for her. Um, so a little over a year ago, uh, my husband and I were living in South Carolina, Columbia, South Carolina, and we both really hated our jobs, we were both social workers, and we knew we needed to change something. So a couple months later, I'm driving over the John Nolan Bridge, and I see this beautiful skyline of Madison, and we're moving here. Our work-life situation is completely fixed. But our social life is non-existent. It's terrible. We have nowhere to go, we have no money to go there, and we have no one to go with. And we realize that we're spending an insane amount of time with each other. So this is our life now. We realize we have nothing to talk about. We're both incredibly lonely and grieving. And we realize that our work problem is fixed, but 1,200 other problems sprouted up. You know, right now, my husband is not enough for me. That's just how it is. And I, I'm not really enough for him. Our life is, what we consider our life is over and it's changing. But in this like intense lying kindness that he's like giving me in this moment, he's saying to me like, you can be enough and you will be enough. And it made me realize that there's hope for one day him being enough for me. And that all those things I used to do with my girlfriends uh, the pizza nights, and the talking, and the remembering, that he can become that person of my life if I give him enough time, and vice versa. And it gives me the room to explore if I'm enough for myself, which I'm not at the time. All right, so that's everybody who signed up. Does anybody else want to tell a story? So, I mean, you don't know this when you're little, other than you're in the middle and you have to fight for meaning or identity. I will never be the guy who races into the burning building to rescue the baby, but I damn well was the guy who <laughs> raced into my backyard to rescue my $80 hunk of dead pig. And that was the first time my family in over 25 years saw me talking, actually communicating with people, talking with people, smiling, laughing, reaching out, instead of just sitting in the corner. And so for them to see that, they were just so shocked and amazed, but happy. Thanks everybody for coming out to Madison Storytellers. Uh, we have a Facebook page. That's a really good place to, to be aware of us. And we have a couple events. Next month, you know what?